Right now, we want to welcome in Hall of Fame rider Mike Smith joining us. Mike, uh, good afternoon. Thanks hey, for Mike. joining us. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Thank you for having me on. Well, of course, it's uh, the Breeders' Cup World Championships coming up uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, heading into such a big time of the year and such a big event, what, what do you do to get ready? Is there anything, a uh, stress reliever? Do you just stay focused? you keep studying the races? What do you do leading up to such a big event year in and year out? Well, uh, not a whole lot, to be honest with you. I mean, just <laughs> other than, you know, going over the races and handicapping some and getting some sort of strategy, you know, put together. But other than that, um, you know, my work is all, all done. The horses' works are all done. Now it's time to just to, just to get the, the races on and see what happens. Well, I mean, your numbers in, in, in the Breeders' Cup, by the way, are just beyond ridiculous. I mean, the, the, the most wins of any rider, the fact that you've won a 20% clip, uh, 20 for 101 is just mind-boggling against the world's best competition and field sizes are always enormous. And we're taking a look at those those 20 wins, five more than Jerry Bailey with 15. And again, a win percentage where at, at, at a, any meeting, a jockey is happy, is ecstatic when they win 20% of the time. And you've done this, Mike, 20 wins, nine seconds, six thirds, over $25 million. Um, in Breeders' Cup races, at this stage, obviously you get really excited for a weekend like this, you still get some nerves at all, or, or you, it, it's good for any athlete to, to be a little bit nervous, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. Uh, if, they, if you ain't nervous, you ain't ready, uh, the way I look at it anyway. And if someone tells you they're not, well, then they should probably not, not be doing it. <laughs> right. And, you know, you're going to be, everyone's going to be, at, you know, trying to gang up on you, obviously with shared belief in the Breeders' Cup Classic. We, we, we knew this horse had a ton of ability before his win in the awesome again, but I want you to touch upon a little bit upon the heart, grit, and determination that he displayed in winning this race after basically having a bunch of easy wins before this tough win in the awesome again. Yeah, I mean, it was actually a pretty, pretty incredible win, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't think 90 98% of horses probably wouldn't have got the job done, but, I mean, that's how tough he is. You know, what he lacks in, in size, he, he has in heart uh, that and much more. He's a he's not a very tall horse. He's he's made really well though. He's kind of long and just got great. Uh, he's just a great athlete, man. He's just amazing. His talent is incredible, and, and every time you call on him, I mean, he just he gives you all he's got, which is which is great. And he's you know he showed now that he's able to overcome things and and still get the job done. So that even makes you a little more confident going in. Now, in the awesome again, uh, going into the far turn, you're starting to call on him. Are you still confident at that point that he's a winner, or did he surprise you with the way he really he dug down and he fought all the way to the wire? You know, he took a bit of a breather. You'll see him kind of back up uh, just past the three-eighth pole there just for a little bit. But it just, he just needed to get a second, a second win, and once he got it, uh, at that point, then I was pretty confident he was going to get the job done, which was incredible. I was, I was in awe, to be honest with you, at him. At the, at the, he actually was able to get up and beat a, a really good horse, and a horse that's doing real good now in Fed Biz. What do you What do you do early on in the race if, let's say, you know, Byron were to get away a little bit, get away from Moreno? Does that that change your game plan at all uh, aboard? Share belief was obviously a horse who does possess some pretty good tactical speed. You know, just depending on how easy he's getting away. To be honest with you, Matt, uh, if, if he if he's getting away pretty easy, well, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be far behind him. I would imagine. You know, I hope to get away in good order myself, hopefully, and, and uh, be able to place him uh, just just right in behind him. Uh, it's kind of the game plan going in right now, anyway, unless something changes when we leave there. And if, if that's the case, then we're just going to have to adapt to it. Well, share belief uh, nine to five there on the morning line in the classic. So hoping to see yourself sitting just a few lengths off of uh, the pace setters uh, early on in that event. So I'm sure you've you've drawn the race up several times and looked at the pace scenarios and and certain trips. If there was a case where you somehow find yourself breaking cleanly on the front end or near the front end, can he win that way? Oh, without a doubt, he showed <laughs> that he can win a lead. He can he can win from. Way back, he can win from stalking or in the middle of the pack. Uh, he's kind of done it all, uh, which is really good. He doesn't necessarily need, need a, a, you know, a, a race to set up for him, uh, to, to, for him to run his race. He seems to adapt to, to any any situation, and, and uh, hopefully we'll get away good and, and have a good clear trip and, and just see if we're good enough. Okay, well, 9 to 5 in the morning line, the biggest race we had this weekend, the $5 million Beers Club Classic. You have so many other mounts. We're going to try to touch upon a couple others while we have you, Mikey. Um, the sprint, I think you have a very interesting horse for, for Bob Baffert, who, who, of course, knows how to win this race. 
Um, you know, Secret Circle for Baffert is going to be your favorite, but you are going to ride Indianapolis undefeated, lightly raced. What do you know about this guy? And from my perspective, it looks like he could be sitting on a huge performance for career start number four, second start off a long layoff. And he certainly could. I mean, it could set up for him really well, too, with all the speed in there. He should be sitting right in behind him. And, and uh, you know, when he, when he works anyway, he finishes with a good run at the end. So hopefully that's the case uh, going into the sprint, that he'll just sit in behind him and, and give me that run when I call on him. And we're taking a look here at uh, Indianapolis, who's really done nothing wrong and uh, going to go from post position two in the sprint on Saturday. Mike, as we go back to the Breeders' Cup turf, you're going to be riding Big John B, a horse who's really uh, excelled and, and blossomed into a nice horse uh, since coming out here to Southern California. You've been aboard him in all four of his starts out here uh, at Santa Anita and Del Mar. Is he a five-year-old gelding who's really just starting to head toward peak form, really just getting better and better? He seems to be, you know, he's going to have to run a, his A-plus race, uh, you know, to get the job done on, on Saturday. But he's certainly capable of it, and, he, and he's training like He's actually doing better right now than he's done the, going into his last race. He's doing a lot better right now, so hopefully he'll, he'll run that kind of race. And then again, you're, you're, <laughs> the mounts that you have, this has got to, I mean, it's got to be so exciting for you. We're just going through, <laughs> you know, horse after horse that's one of your favorites, has, has a really good chance of winning each and every one of their um, respective races. Judy the Beauty in the Philly and Mare Sprint, I mean, she's had such a nice career. She ran so well in defeat in the Philly and Mare Sprint last year, finishing second to Groupie Doll. Um, what do you think of her chances? This weekend, uh, can she get the job done? Beat Artemis Agriterra, who's a really nice runner for Mike Hushin. Yeah, I, I really think she can. Uh, she's lightly raced uh, this year, uh, coming off a win in Del Mar. Uh, went back to Kentucky and has been training lights out. Her last five eighths of a mile work on the on the dirt there was incredible. Uh, they say one of the best five eighths ever to be to be posted on the work tab there at Kingman. So she's doing really, really well. She's fresh coming into this race. Uh, She's ran here before. She's she's won. She's you know she ran second last year. Uh, you know I see her coming in, coming in fresh and, and running a big race. That's uh, Judy the Beauty five to two on the morning line in the Philly and Mare Sprint. And then, uh, Mike, as we go back to race number four, it's the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. You're going to be aboard Wonder Gal, a, a filly you're going to be riding for the first time. Uh, I'm sure you've watched her races. Uh, what do you know about this filly, and, and uh, how do you expect to see the trip play out in her first try here? Well, I, I saw her yesterday, actually, for the first time. She's a big, good-looking filly, uh, and she should come running. Uh, Leah's got her doing good. She's really happy about the way she's training. Uh, so uh, hopefully she'll she'll settle in and, and come with a good run. I mean, obviously, one of the things that makes this weekend so great is you have the unbelievable competition. You have the best horses in the world, the best trainers in the world, the best riders in the world. That maybe as somebody who's been so great at the top of their profession for such a long period of time, maybe you, you could comment on what Gary Stevens is doing, coming back off of knee replacement surgery at the age of 51, off of a three-plus month left. How crazy is it <laughs> what, what Stevens is going to do with a Breeders' Cup mount tomorrow and then one on Saturday with, uh, with Bakken in the sprint? <laughs> it's crazy to let you know him as well as I do. I wouldn't <laughs> expect anything, anything but what he's doing, to be honest with you. Uh, that's just who he is. He's an incredible athlete. Uh, got a high tolerance for pain. He's lived with it his whole life. Uh, I think he's actually... Uh, living with, with less pain now than he was before right. the operation. Like he's so happy and he's walking well, he's doing good, and he looks great breeding horses. Uh, and they wouldn't shock me not one single bit if he jumped up one one. All right, Mike, most, import Mike, most important question. Um, I need some money for this weekend, <laughs> obviously. So I want to know if Home Journey is going to go gate to wire down the hill today in race well, number nine. I'm planning on it. It's about time to start uh, getting ready for getting ready for everything. So that was good. Get the weekend started off good. Okay, because that would help me personally quite a bit if you could do that for me. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll do my best. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mike Smith holds the record for the most Breeders' Cup victories with 20. Mike, uh, good luck this week and congratulations on all of your success so far and uh, and many more victories to come, my friend. Good luck, Mike. Thank, Be thank well. you, guys. 
Bye-bye. Mike Smith, thank you very much. A Hall of Fame rider holds the record for the most breeders. He's getting pulled left 20. and right, too, for interviews and stuff. So real yeah, nice to so take a few minutes to, to chat with us. A big, big thank you to Mike, and uh, lots of luck. Uh, best of luck this weekend in the Breeders' Cup. And looking through all his mounts, uh, it's, it has the looks of a beautiful weekend. So, Mike Smith, thanks for joining us. Uh, go to tvg.com, 4njbets.com for all the details on 5-2 to two guaranteed advance wagering on shared belief tomorrow.